we are right now and what's happening in this part of the plant. This is the packaging room. What happens, the papers are printed, they're delivered by a gripper conveyor. Each gripper will hold one newspaper, so you have an accurate count of a, of a particular paper, and it's delivered very precisely to the stacker. To so make it's nice, actually pinching the paper like this? It actually grips it and pinches it and holds it. Okay, and then that's going into the stacker, which is over Machine here. Machine like this. We're running. Okay. Right. And its job is to obviously stack. Right. How, uh, it's the same number of papers every it time? It stacks and counts the amount of papers in a bundle. So you have an accurate stack and an accurate count of the papers being delivered. And then what comes after that? After that, it's introduced into a strapping machine. It's tied by strap, by plastic strap. And then it's introduced onto our tray system by an induction system. And from that tray, it can be delivered to any truck loading position out on the loading dock. All of this happens, for the most part, without any human intervention. That's correct. Três pessoas levaram uma noite toda para produzirem manualmente os primeiros 600 exemplares do Post em 1801. E é fácil imaginar que em breve pouco mais do que três produzirão 600 mil. O processo de produção do jornal se tornou tão automatizado que há poucos lugares onde ainda podemos pôr as mãos, a não ser aqui, ao carregar o caminhão. Ainda fazem isso à moda antiga. Nesta era digital, o jornal continua a evoluir. Exemplares online dos principais jornais do mundo estão disponíveis na internet. Mas quanto a mim, eu ainda prefiro o método antigo. Afinal... Do que adianta ter um registro da história se não podemos pôr as mãos nele? Eu sou Ron Hazelton. <música>